Good afternoon, everyone. It is so good to have you here today with Sunday Live with Pastor John. I am Jonathan Brandenburg, and I get to be the pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Rancho Cucamonga, California, in beautiful, sunny Southern California. Well, a happy Pentecost Sunday, specifically to you all, and for all of you giving me a shout out already, you're making me blush. It's beautiful. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put you up on the screen because you guys are that awesome. So Sherry, what's up? It's good to have you. We're gonna move her up here like this. Yeah, we're gonna and and Craig, what's up? It is nap time, Craig. Hello, Amy. Hello, Vicky. Carolyn, a big smile back to you too. Oh, a big smile back to you too, Carolyn. And Les, hey, what's up? And happy, happy Sunday to you, Tom Parslow. Happy Sunday to you. Peace be with everyone. Kim, it's always beautiful to see your name pop up. Snap, you know I love you, Mark. It's so good to see you. Kathy, so good. Betty, what's up? Robert, Rob, cheers, my buddy. Roberto, yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, it's so good to have everyone. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave, because yeah, Connie, hello, Hi. Sarah, sorry, Les. Sarah, I see you too, friend. I see you too. So good. And Jody, what's up? Hey, what's up? That's so good. Heather, it's so good to see you. I'm trying to translate your, your, your emojis here, but I'll get there. I'll get there. I'm young. I'm hip. I should be able to translate any emoji. So anyway, it's so good to see everyone here today um, on this Pentecost Sunday. I'm... <sighs> I'm a little reflective today. Well, I shouldn't say a little. I, I shouldn't lie. Uh, I am a lot reflective today. Not only is it the wrap-up day for our sermon series, uh, this three-week vision series, but guys, it has been one of those weeks. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times, when we just say it, it's been one of those years, right? It's been one of those, how many times have we seen uh, the 2020 memes come out? Like, can we just have a redo? Can we just do it all over again? Cody, what's up? It's so good to see you. Oh man, howdy partner. Gosh, I miss my Texas friends. And Brian, so good to see you. Hello all to you as well. Donna, I gotta give you a shout out too. So anyway, so I'm just reflective today. I'm gonna be a little bit more you know, uh, reserved today, even though it's a day of celebration. It is the church's birthday, and there should be a lot to be, there is a lot to celebrate and, and to be a part of and to be all this kind of stuff. But guys, I just think today of all days, the, the church has to be a bit reflective about our context. Um, we have to be uh, understanding of where we sit today um, and, and kind of sort of say, it has to be what it has to be, and we're going to celebrate, and yet we're not going to ignore. So I'm very excited about that. So Karen, hello. So good to see you, Karen, and the whole Clark family. Marlene, thank you. Yes, I'm in the sanctuary today at Pentecost. Had to get my banner going. It's awesome. My banner's awesome. I love this banner. I, I just could sit on this banner all day. So it's so good to see you guys. And, and and say hi to Ernie for me as well. Uh, it's so good to be with y'all. And everybody who's with us, who's not commenting or passing through us, everything, peace be with you. Happy Pentecost. Uh, Jesus loves you. And that's, I'm telling you guys, that's what's keeping me going right now, is that somewhere in all of this dialogue and, and conversations uh, and all of this pandemic and all of this uh, and all this pandemonium and all of the racism and the riots and all of the protests and the proclamations and the podcasts and everything that's sort of been absorbing these last few days, these last few weeks, these last few months, um, that grace of God is there. And it's central and it's good. And this grace of God is comforting and beautiful and good, but it's also like we celebrate on Pentecost, like we're going to talk about. It is also this thing that just breathes new wind and new fire and new change into our world that frankly is hard to embrace. That this is the gospel uh, that does this, not only comforts us and make, reminds us that we're loved, but it also does this change in us as well and change in our world. So um, we're going we're gonna to focus on that a little later. But before we get started, uh, I don't know about you, I need music. Um, and Nathaniel has put together two songs for us. Um, and so uh, the first one is like, 
one of a childhood favorites of mine. And it is. It's kind of a kid song, if you will. But it's so, so good. And we need to be reminded that we are all children of the Heavenly Father. Not just a select few of us get that right, but we are all children of the Heavenly Father. So that is the song we're going to put up first today, get our hearts and our minds going. I'm going to open us up, us up in the invocation and an opening prayer, and then we're going to go right into that song because I don't know about you, but I need it. So let us open up in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. All of it. We thank you for the challenges. We thank you for the things that we don't want to see or don't want to hear about or we are sick of hearing about. And yet, Father, we thank you. We thank you that it's here. We thank you that you are guiding us through everything, that you are guiding your children through all of this by your grace, by your strength, by your love, by your wisdom. So, Father, continue to guide us through that. Continue to lead us, your daughters and your sons, in this very confusing time to back to your word, to back to your grace, to back to your spirit that blows fresh wind and fresh fire in our worlds today. Father, blow that fresh wind and that fresh fire into our worlds that come from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, here is our own Nathaniel Hoffman presenting Children of the Heavenly Father. Enjoy, my friends. Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nestling bird or star in heaven, such a refuge here was given. God His own doth tend and nourish, in His holy courts they flourish, from all evil things he spares them, in his mighty arms he bears them. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever, unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrows all he Thank you, Nate, so much for that. Um, just, again, one of my favorite childhood songs, and it's so good. Just a simple reminder, that simple, beautiful reminder about how much we are loved by the Heavenly Father and how much He calls us His own. So I have a, a little special for you guys, a little special scene for you guys as well. So here's that. That is what's waiting for us here a little bit later Um uh, this is uh, a sort of a view of our stained glass window and uh, one of our Christ the King candles. And there is communion. And we are going to be celebrating a time of virtual communion because just like when Monday, Thursday was here, I just could not let it pass um, to, and not celebrate communion. And so 
here is Pentecost and we need communion time together. And uh, I know there's a little bit of dialogue and discussion about that and how people feel about it. And it's going to be completely optional at the very end, but I just want to let you know that is, that is on its way. And also what's on its way is in-person communion, in-person time of worship is in the works. Um, I was hoping maybe we could do something uh, today and that just didn't happen. So um, I apologize about about that. Well, I don't really apologize. I was hopeful. <laughs> I was just hopeful. So um, but anyway, so that is coming. You're going to hear more about that this week, and I'll make more announcement about that at the end. But here we are uh, in Pentecost. So we have to read, not have to read, but we should read the Pentecost story of Acts 2. So we are going to read today Acts 2, 1 through 21. Acts 2, 1 through 21. And I'm, of course, reading in the old Pew edition, ESV standard, you know, all this kind of stuff. Bust out your Bible apps. Bust out the message that you love or the Good News Bible. Bust out the New Living Translation. I heard that this this uh, last week. Uh, bust out that old, big old KJV, King James Version that you never, ever use except for special occasions. Bust it out. Anything you got. So we're going to do Acts 2. Uh, 1 through 21. So Acts 2, 1 through 21. And I'm going to read from the ESV, English Standard Version. Here we go. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? And here comes the list that every reader of every church has always been like, oh, why did I get this reading, right? But here's the list. All right, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Perga and Phophilia and Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling them in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, but others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is certainly the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that's Acts chapter 2, 1 through 21 in the ESV, my friends. All right, let's get into this. There's a lot to say, and I'm not going to say enough. I'll tell you that right now. There is a lot to say about this text and about what's going on here, and I'm sure some of you have already heard a sermon or two or a thought or a devotional or something about uh, this whole concept of Pentecost. 
And there's, and, and I'm not going to be able to say it all, right? And so what? here's what I'm going to do. This is our third and final week of our vision series. We've been talking about loved and sent. The first week we talked about how much we are loved and, the, and we are here in the presence of Acts 16. And then last week we talked about zebra kisses and going to the market and being immersed in the ideas of the world, but bringing the gospel to bear on those ideas. But it's going to be hard and it's going to be different. We're going to get those, we're going to get those kisses that don't feel like kisses, that feel slobbery and wet and uncomfortable and weird. And yet that is the moment the gospel is the most important. That is the moment where love needs to be expressed in the most obvious way. And so we get all this stuff and we, so we got all this stuff. And so today we wrap those things together. How are we both loved and sent? How does all this work? And there was a mantra when I started talking with, uh, with the, the leadership, especially the board of directors uh, of, of our church, uh, there was sort of a mantra that I kept saying over and over again, the frame is the frame. Because the idea rotated around basically four concepts. The loved concept really birthed out the whole idea, how do we take care of of how do we take care of God's people? What does it mean to be family here and now in this church? And then structurally, how do we take care of the house, the gathering place that the Lord gathers his people at? So that was sort of two parts of that frame or two prongs of that frame. And then last week we talked about the neighbors of our world, how it's not always going to be easy, not, but we, we, we are sent to them. We are loved and so we love. We are comforted so we comfort. And that's how that's how that works. And so sent to the neighbors of our world. Now, the final part of that frame is how do we lay holy stones for going into the future? How do we, how do we put down what we believe is going to be the next generation or two or three's sort of path? And they're going to modify it and they're going to change it and they're going to do things. But here's our best way to set them up for gospel success, kingdom success. Here's the best way that we are, are laying our holy foundation on Christ and how he's bringing us into our context to be both loved and sent to do the basics well so we can go forward into a 21st century, not go backwards, not try to recreate something from the 20th or 19th or 16th or 1st century. We are going forwards with God into the 21st century and say, how do we lay holy foundation or holy stones on that, on Jesus. What does that look like? What does that feel like? And so that's the frame. And I keep coming back. This the frame is the frame, man. You just got to keep coming back to it, right? And even shout out to Jamie Beeson. She got these little t-shirts. Let's see if I can get it to you guys. I'm going to move my camera a little bit here. Oh, the frame is the frame. So that's how, uh, <laughs> shout out to Jamie Beeson for making the shirts. Uh, that's how it all started. Uh, and, and so that lens, that concept, uh, that idea is what I'm bringing to the table today. And I, but, I, but it's not good enough. Guys, it's not good enough. It's, it's not good enough because it has to incarnate itself. And when you hear any pastor or theologian or highfalutin uh, person of the Christian church say incarnate itself, it just means make it flesh, make it real. Make it contextualize. Make it, make, it your, in, make it a reality in your neighborhood. It's not good enough, guys, for me or for the church just to say things. It's not good enough for us to just simply say, well, we want to be sent to the neighbors of our world. We want to love the family of God. We want to take care of the, the resources that God has given us for the now, and we want to set a good a uh, beautiful kingdom gospel path for the future. It's not good enough. As cool as it is, as much as I love preaching and proclaiming and doing all this stuff, it's not good enough. We got to find where the rubber hits the road because if we don't, if we don't, my friends, here's what happens. The flesh uses the spirit instead of the spirit using the flesh. Let me say that again. If we do not incarnate, if we do not say, how is this idea, these cool thoughts and dreams and visions going to be real in our neighborhoods? As, as, as a friend of mine, I know he's, it's not his thing, but Matt Popovitz, Matt Popovitz once told me to heart your hood, right? And how do we heart our hood for real? Not just say, I love you. I'm never going to talk to you. Love you, neighborhood, right? I'm going to totally ignore you. 
But how do we actually do it? And, and the people of God, right? I love the people that's in my pews. I don't even know their first name, but of course I love them, right? It's not good enough to say it. We have to actually do it. And that's why it's like the frame is the frame. The frame and the frame is just saying the frame is one thing, but then you've got to do the frame. The ideas are one thing, but then you've got to do those ideas. You've got to enact those ideas. You've got to be about those ideas. You've got to live and die with those ideas in so many ways. And they're all lifted up to Jesus. They're all saying, Jesus, you be the, the final judges. I don't want to be on my own dream. I don't want to be on my own vision. I want to be about your kingdom vision, your kingdom dream. But we've got to do it. As, as another, as another uh, friend, uh, I don't know if he's a friend, I consider him my friend, I met him once, you know, but I've read a lot of his books, Bob Goff does, he says, love does, right? And so I could quote all these kind of things, right? But let me go back to what I, sa- but what I said, because if we don't, the flesh uses the spirit instead of the spirit using the flesh. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm taking it from the prophet Joel, first of all. And of course, Peter is quoting the prophet Joel, right? And so this is what he says, in the last days it shall be, and I don't know about you, but in the last few days, I have never felt more than in the last days. I'm just saying. I've never felt more in this last days. What are these last days? I went back and read the entire book of Joel. I'm like, yep, that sounds about right. Is there, is there some serious overlap? I'll say that at least. Anyway, so in the last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. But that's where it's coming from. Because you see, when flesh gets used by the Spirit, it, it's going to do amazing, amazing things. But you see, when the flesh tries to use the Spirit, things go sideways. Let me give you a kind of a whimsical example. So growing up in the Midwest, uh, in Kansas, there are very few uh, books, I mean, not books, sorry, movies about Kansas or involving Kansas. But one of those movies involved one of my favorite actors when I was a kid, still one of my favorite actors, but his, his name was Steve Martin. And the movie was called Leap of Faith. And there it is, Leap of Faith. I, this is the, the, one of the original movie posters of this, uh, of this film. And I love the tagline on this. Real miracles, sensibly priced. I love this movie. Now, here's why I bring this up. Now, Steve Martin, his character, Jonas Nightingale, what a great name. He has it, he actually has a real name, but that's his basic stage name. It's his preacher name, right? Jonas Nightingale is, uh, is, is using the spirit for sort of the gains of the flesh or material gains, right? We might say. His flesh, he's really smart guy. I mean, crazy smart guy. And he has a broken story and a broken home and all that kind of stuff, right? And he's learned a lot of street sense. And the street sense has taught him there's money to be made basically dispensing spiritual wares or spiritual ideas. There's money to be made if you know how to play the game. And so Jonas basically goes, makes his entire career on doing this. It makes really good money and he makes a, a pretty good profit and he builds a pretty good empire around this whole idea. And it's real miracles sensibly priced. It is, the, it is the, one of the best examples I can think of of a movie represent what happens if the flesh got hold of the spirit. What happens if the flesh took over and started uh, using the spirit for its own works or for its own gains or these kind of things, right? And I think leap of faith is good. He's still, he's just trying to make a buck like we all are, right? He's just trying to make a living. He has friends, he has a community. But the problem is with Jonas is that it's, it's, it's all busted up inside. It's all broken. It's all flesh. And on the outside, he's just using the spirit to do whatever he needs to do, right? And yet, I don't want to ruin the movie for you. So I'm going to try to say this without hashtag spoiler alerts, right? But at the end, Jesus, God, uses a flesh to bring about the Spirit. Uses a flesh moment, a real miracle. Not the miracles Jonas is talking about, a real miracle, a flesh moment to say, no, 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 the Spirit is in charge. And this changes Jonas. This messes Jonas up big time. And it messes some of his friends up big time as well. So if you get a chance, go out and watch Leap of Faith. I think it's on Amazon Prime or or Netflix or something right now. But y'all, I'm telling you, 
when the flesh tries to get a hold of the spirit, when the, when the flesh, and, and when I mean flesh, I use it in the most positive term as well, us, all people, when we try to get our heads around the spirit, I'm telling you, we're going to end up messing it up. We're going to end up trying to sell it to people or force it on people. We're going to try to do it our way because we're in control. We're the frame. The frame isn't the frame. We're the frame. The flesh is the frame. And so everything that we try to do, every time we try to accomplish even the best of things, guys, and we are trying in our nation, in our country right now, we are trying to accomplish good things. We are trying to accomplish healthy, uh, equality, uh, equitable things, right? We are trying to do good things. But my fear is that the flesh is trying to use the spirit to get to its own ends. And when that happens, something goes sideways. Something goes broken. It is a good decree. What the flesh sees, because we are fearfully and wonderfully made, but what the flesh decrees is it can't get to. And it says, well, if I can use the spirit, maybe this way or the Bible that way or this concept or this idea this way, maybe I can get there. And it doesn't. It's, it's frustrated because it can't, but he knows it's good. It knows where we're trying to get to is good because there's something inside of us that's fearfully and wonderfully made. There's something inside of us that is planted by the Heavenly Father that says, you are mine and this is how it's supposed to be. And we're kind of right. We're absolutely right in so many ways, right? And yet we cannot get there. No matter how much spiritual wears or money wears or policy wears or pol uh, pol political wares we, we deal with and mess with, we just can't seem to get there, right? And it's, oh my gosh, oh so frustrating. It's heartbreaking. It's broken. And but this is where I think Acts 2 wants so desperately to speak to us again. It says, let me pour my spirit on your flesh. It can't be the other way around. The frame must be the frame. You can't be sent and then try to love. You gotta be loved. And then you can be sent. You gotta have the spirit poured on you and it's passionate and fiery. Guys, the spirit is nothing to mess with. But it has to say to Jonathan, Jonathan, you are loved. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it, but you are loved. And now go share my good word. Now you are sent. Go share that love, that passion, that strength, that good news gospel moment for the poor and the widow and the orphan and the broken and the immigrant and, and, and for all flesh to hear. For all skin colors to hear. And sometimes you're going to meet other people who are sent and all you're going to have in common with them is they are loved and you are loved and that is enough. Let them be sent. Hear their words because they might may be words we need to hear. But we're all loved. We're all loved in grace. We're all loved in this powerful, passionate, fiery, fresh wind that it blows through us that reminds us that we are loved. And yet that same fiery, powerful spirit that blows through our world also sends us out and reminds us the frame is not something that you can manipulate. You can try. The frame isn't something you can just talk about and dream up and it's all up here in the cloud or something you can muscle your way into the material world in your neighborhood. No, we have to start with the Spirit. We have to start with this grace and this gospel and then go out boldly. But the problem is we don't usually. The problem is we're freaked out, just like everybody else in the story except Peter. But I think Peter's freaked out too. Everybody else is like, what is going on? They must be drunk. I want, <laughs> I want the church to kind of be sent out like that. We are so drunk on love. We are so drunk on what God has given us that we go out so almost recklessly. That people are like, whoa, 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 what's wrong with you? You need to back yourself off. Instead, the world is calling us out to say, will you ever step up? 
Will you ever turn your great sermons and your great theology and your great ideologies into something that actually hearts your hood? Will you actually make it into flesh or is it all just, is it all just spirit? Is it all really just in the back of the, in the back behind all the studios and all the Facebook live posts and all the guitars and all the organs? Is it really just the flesh trying to control the spirit? I don't want that. I, I, I don't think we're made for that, my friends. I don't think we have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light to just say, well, the darkness has its day. Oh, the darkness, you know, whatever. It's going to do what it's going to do. I can't change anything. But Jesus loves me. No, no. We can't do that. It's been poured out on our flesh for a reason. And the text says it too. What are those reasons? Well, it really is another way of saying loved and sent as far as I'm concerned. Because look what it says. It says they'll be poured out on you, on all flesh, on all. Guys, wrap your head around that all flesh. We're talking skin color. We're talking gender identities. We're talking about sexual orientation. Every single last ounce of flesh on this planet for humans have been fearfully and passionately knit together by a father who we claim as our God. If we cannot wrap our heads around that moment, we are going to have so much trouble being sent. We're going to have so much trouble with the concept because other people aren't going to be like us and we're going to say, that must be bad. No, it's not necessarily. Yes, there is a lot of dialogue that needs to happen. Yes, there's lots of discussions about whether that is bad or this is bad. But I'm telling you guys, a lot of it isn't bad. The plurality actually is how God made us and how God knit together our church. But this is what happens when that church is knit together. This is what happens when the spirit takes over the flesh, not the flesh takes over the spirit. This is what happens, and I love it. It says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Guys, this is brilliant. This is good. This is about laying holy stones for the future. Who's the ones that are prophesying? Who are the ones that are saying, this is the word of the Lord, and it's new, and it's fresh, but it's really renewed. And it's really brought back from an ancient world, made new for the context. Who are they? They're sons and daughters. Guys, it's the sons and the daughters that are doing it. It's the young folk. They are dreaming, uh, they are seeing, uh, they are telling us something that we have to hear. Even for me, I'm considered young in my world. No, 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 no. I need to listen to the 29-year-old and the 19-year-old. There was a guy named Mike Newman when I was just 30, and he was 50, and he had a position of power and all this kind of stuff. And he looked over at me, and I was a mess, y'all. And he said, what are you dreaming about? What do I need to hear from you, John? I'm like, what? You don't need to hear nothing from me. I'm 20 years you're, you're younger than you, and you have it all figured out, and I don't. And yet he said, what do I need to hear from you? He allowed me to prophesy. Do we allow our young people to prophesy into our world? When the spirit takes over the flesh, that seems to happen. And then you go down the next day, and the young men, I, I would even say women in there, but I'm just going to say young women, will see visions. And I love this concept of visions because visions are revelatory. Dreams, we'll get to that next. Dreams are, are something that we, we kind of deal with, right? But, and we kind of understand for the most part, but visions are revelatory. Visions are what comes out of nowhere and says, I did not see that coming. I could not have seen that coming. And it says the young people not only will prophesy to us, not only will, will say something we need to hear that is from the Lord, but then they'll see something. They'll see something revelatory that we won't naturally see. And that's so, so hard because we are built to say, we are older, we are wiser, we've seen more of the life than you have. How dare you try to say something to us? This is the way it's always been. This is the way it should be. And Pentecost breaks into that. When the Spirit pours onto the flesh, Pentecost breaks that. And it's so hard. It's so difficult for us to let go. Say, maybe God is doing something fresh and new that is off the charts. Because that's what revelatory, that's what a vision is. It's off the charts. Couldn't have seen it naturally. And then the final, 
the final straw, which I love, is 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 so good. And he says the old men, and I'll tell just old people, <laughs> it's old people, and your old men will dream dreams, guys. How many? I'm gonna I'm gonna put my myself. I know I'm only 39 years old, but I'm gonna put myself in this category for two seconds. I'm gonna say I'm an old codger, and I am so cynical. Guys, I got a I got a problem with cynicism. I am so scared to dream anymore. I am so scared to vision anymore because I've seen dreams and I've seen visions. Let's talk about dreams. I've seen dreams not turn out the way I want them to. I've seen dreams crumble before my very eyes, and I'm 39 year old. All you 50 somethings, 40 somethings, 60 somethings, 80 somethings, how many dreams have you seen crumble before your eyes? I mean, big. Beautiful dreams just be destroyed by the brokenness, sinfulness, hurt, pain of this world. And yet because of Pentecost, yet because when, fle when flesh is taken over by the Spirit, you are given the grace and the joy and the beauty to dream again. Somewhere in all of the sarcasm or the bitterness or the disenfranchisement or the disillusionment, we're given a sanctuary of space to say it's okay, son, daughter of the living God. You can dream again. This is Pentecost. This is where things change. And guys, Pentecost doesn't, it's not a one-time event. Every day, what does it say? Grace is new every single day. Every day we wake up with the Spirit blowing into us. Can we hear it? Can we experience? Not every day is going to be revelatory. Not every day you're going to want to dream. Not every day you're going to have some punk young kid come up and tell you something, something just profound and beautiful that's based in the Holy Spirit. Not every day, but there are days. And I'm telling you guys, everything that's going around me right now has taught me I need to listen. I need to listen now more than ever, not to my flesh, as cool as it is. It's fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Come on, check out the beard. It's going great, right? I'm smart. I just got a, I just heard that uh, this week that I'm finished with my doctorate. I'm Dr. Brandenburg now. I'm a smart guy. I have a doctor in front of me, right? I need to listen to the Spirit more now than ever. I need... We need, the church needs, any follower of Christ so desperately needs to listen again to the fresh wind and the fierce fire that blows through our Pentecostal belief. Our belief that our God not only loves us, that he sent his only begotten son to die for us, therefore we are saved, but then bring that salvation to the flesh. Bring that good news and that good word to our families and our neighborhoods to our churches in the present and how we are marching forward into the future that we need to make the frame the frame again and let the spirit pour out all the fleshy stuff that's happening for us so we can engage so we can be real so we can be the humans that god has made us to be in this present moment let that happen, my friends. I say it to myself every day. Let that happen. John, just let the Spirit take over. Let it pour out on your flesh instead of your flesh trying to control what the Spirit's about. That's my prayer today, my friends. That's my big vision, if you will. Some punk 39-year-old in a t-shirt in the sanctuary with candles behind him and some palm branches and all this crazy studio. I'll show, a, I'll show a picture of this crazy studio that I got over here that you, don't, you guys never see. You know, all of this, man, I'm just saying that's the vision. That's what I want Shepherd of the Hills to be about, y'all. I, I want every church to be about, but not just that's what we need to be about. I rarely say that because it's dangerous. But guys, that's what we need to be about. The Spirit is pouring out on our real lives right here and right now. Let's join Him. Let's prophesy, dream dreams, and hear the visions anew so that we, we, the people of God, can participate 
in what God is doing in the middle of all the chaos, in the middle of all the tragedy, in the middle of the hurt and the pain, that we can participate not only to say, yeah, we feel your pain, but we are going to join you in joy. We're going to join you in saying the frame is the frame and we are loved and we are sent and we are here. We're with you. Let's do this together in the Spirit. Let's the Spirit pour out on all flesh once again. Amen. I wish there was like a commercial break or something after this, because after I get done with sermons, usually what happens is we'll, we'll do something in the, in the normal flow of the service, and I'll have a moment just go, all right, well, that was cool. Because <laughs> half of the sermon, I don't, I don't write my sermons out ahead of time, and so many times I, I end up going, oh, I needed to hear that. <laughs> I, get, I hope you guys might, might wanted to hear that, but I certainly needed to hear that. So thank you. Uh, for letting me share. So we are going to go into a time of prayer, my dear friends, and thank you. I was I was reading you guys. I was trying not to get distracted, but you guys were so beautiful, and thank you for the congratulations on being a doctor. Uh, thank you for everyone. I'm going to send a formal thing out of thank you, uh, both on social media and our usual email thing, but you guys are awesome. So what do you need to pray about? Besides, oh wow, just what do we need to pray about? I'm not going to say besides. We need to open this up. What do we need to pray about? I, I, I will say that I have a special prayer that I will pray for the, um, for the protests, for the riots, for the whatever we want to call it anymore, guys. I don't even know what to call it. Um, it's a lot of hurt, but it's also a lot of good stuff we need to hear as well. And as my father-in-law told me today, how do you, what happens when your pain intersects with another person's pain and yet they seem diametrically opposed? What happens when that happens? And I think that's happening in, in, in some ways here. There's a lot of prophecy, frankly, that we need to hear in this. There's a lot of other things that we, we, we may you know, need to ignore or you know, whatever. But what do we need to pray about, guys? PJ to DJ, yeah. <laughs> PJ to DJ. I thought about that. I actually talked to uh, I talked to a friend today about about that uh, via email. It's like maybe I should switch it to DJ. That just doesn't that doesn't sound right. Doctor J, no, no, I'm, I can't play basketball. Yes, we are definitely going to pray for. Let's get this going. Hurting people. Yes. What else do we need to pray about here, my friends? Oh, Jody, awesome. Yes, ears to hear. All right, cool. All those that are hurting. Yes, Susan, we definitely need ears to hear. And Jody, yes, I'm going to put that in the Thanksgiving. Starting new Bible study. Okay. Oh, amen to that, Susan. Hands that help. We're going to... Hands that help and not hurt. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. We're going to pray for our nation. And for the spirit to blow through. Oh, man. And there's a lot of layers in that prayer right there. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Connie, I'm going to put that actually on the, the thankful for, re, for reopening, but wisdom. Very cool. Vicky, absolutely. We'll pray for that. Absolutely, Vicky. Perfect, Vicky. Mm, Kathy, yes. Good. I'm glad Jesse is awake. That is a long, yeah, that's a long road. 
I'm so happy he's awake. I'm so happy he's doing better. All right, Ricky. Absolutely. Peace. Yes, Les. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Les, so much for reminding me. Definitely pray for Larry and the blood clots. Oh, man. That's, that's not cool. All right. What else do we need to pray about, my dear friends? Even if we prayed about it 16 times, it's still worth praying about it again. So. Oh, Heidi. Very cool. Yeah, Heidi's friend got engaged. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Heidi, for sharing that with me. Oh, Christy, yes. We're all going through cancer treatments. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Vicky. Thank you so much for saying that. We will definitely uh, thank, pray for uh, pastors and churches. Yeah, Heather, absolutely. Definitely pray for young people trying to discern all this. Awesome. Oh, Robin, yes, an upcoming wedding. Very cool. In the midst of all the craziness, there's still weddings, guys. I love it. I love it. Oh, good, Susan. So good. That's beautiful. That is so good. All right, what else do we need to pray about, y'all? What else do we need to go over? Anything else, guys? Oh, I guess got to get up for a second. Had to stretch out. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Oh. Connie, thanks. Oh, it's so good. Thanks for friends and neighbors who check in on each other. That is a blessing. That is a huge blessing. All right, y'all. Um, let's go into our time of prayer. And uh, just to kind of give you a heads up, I am going to start with um, a prayer about what's been going on with, uh, with uh, George Floyd's death in the Minneapolis. So just sort of know that coming from that space at the beginning, because I think it's, it's, it's appropriate. But um, yeah, anyway, I just want to give you a heads up on that. Guys. So here we go. Let's pray this thing. And I'm going to switch over my camera to, to the uh, over here. Father, we breathe in and we breathe out. With all that's going on, sometimes it's hard to breathe. Sometimes we even utter the phrase, I can't breathe. Father, these were the words, the final words of George Floyd. And they echo in so many ways all those that go through violence done to them. And the hurt and the pain that is caused upon them for no seemingly good reason at all. And it reminds us of another little simple phrase that was uttered on a cross, oh, so many years ago. When our Lord just simply said, I thirst. 
Father, help us to hear these words anew. Help us to see the pain and the hurt of our neighbors, of our friends, of even those we consider our enemies, the suspect, the outsider. Father, because the more we separate from those around us, the more we do not see each other as fearfully and wonderfully made by you, we stifle our own breathing. We can't breathe anew the power of the Spirit because that same power is telling us they are loved, not just the us of our love of our world, but they are loved. Those that are not part of our circle or of the way we think or vote or look or act or whatever, Father. But when we treat them as other, as we treat them as separate, as we do not see the neighbor as a loved person and worthy of love, we stifle our own breathing. The breath of the Spirit that flows in our lungs and our lives. Father, here today on Pentecost, let us breathe deeply of you. Of how you see our neighbors, our nation. Let us breathe deeply of grace, of forgiveness, and of love. Let us breathe deeply the fact that there is a world over that is screaming out, crying out, pleading out, I cannot breathe. Father, from the breath that you put in our lungs, let us speak up for all our neighbors. Let us share with them from that breath a gospel message and a gospel action. From that breath of the Spirit, help us to be the power for the powerless, the defense for the defenseless. And even if it costs us our last breath, let us stand and say they are loved. No matter who they are, they are loved. They are are my father's son or daughter. And so they are therefore my brother or my sister. Father, help us to breathe in you. Because in so many ways, we can't breathe. We need your breath again. Father, as we go into a life that you have won for us. Keep the frame the frame. Pour out on us, on this flesh and this blood and this body and this life, your spirit and help lead us through, guide us through all the things that are going on in our worlds. Father, especially help those that are just hurting. Again, we pray and uplift for them. Father, we also pray for, give, pray for ears to hear. Ears to hear anew your prophetic word. No matter where that comes from, that we need to hear it. Father, we also pray that, that hands, that our hands, that the church's hands, that any follower of Christ's hands are sent out to help and not to hurt, to bring healing and reconciliation and not more separation and division, Father. Father, we pray for our nation, these United States of America. So many good ideals, so many good thoughts, imaginations, and dreams that are held here in America. And yet, Father, so many times we try to do it by the flesh. We're broken. We're divided. We're disillusioned or just flat out angry. Father, help this nation, help all those that are in dialogue, breathe, 
breath of your spirit. That a new wind would blow through the conversation and the dialogue. The new wind would blow through the community and the way the community sees each other. That there would be a unite that there would be a uniting and not a dividing. These are big prayers, Father, but it is our prayers. And even when there is violence, help there be love. Even when there is anger, help there be compassion. Even when there is all these other things, let the words that we need to hear not escape from our ears. Father, we also pray for the individual concerns that weigh on our heart. We especially pray for Vicki, who is uh, seeing an orthopedic PA tomorrow, to just give her peace. Give her peace and kind of preparing for that and kind of being ready for that and, and what may happen tomorrow. Father, we also give you thanks for Jesse. Wake, but has just a long road to recovery. So just give Jesse peace. Patience, oh, it's such a dangerous prayer, but healing. Remind him he's there. Remind him he is not alone, that you are there and you love him. Father, also be with Larry and these blood clots that keep coming back. Ah. Just ask you to just be with him and uh, walk through him. And again, guide the hands of that watch over him. Father, we pray for all those who are going through cancer treatments right now, especially radiation and chemotherapy, um, just that you would walk with them. And Father, we pray for all those that are going through the uh, coronavirus or effects of it and um, just kind of just hurting from that. And we pray that for the doctors and nurses and med techs and any kind of hospital or medical worker right now that you would just guide them and lead them in this time as well. It's, it's a pretty crazy time. And Father, speaking of crazy times, we also pray for all the young people trying to discern what to do with all of this. Young people from all sorts of communities and backgrounds processing what they're seeing on the news or what they're seeing on social media, what they're seeing uh, wherever. Just give them guidance. Give them words, give them actions that are breathed out of your spirit to, to engage this time. And Father, we also pray for all those that are grieving. There is no time frame on the grief process, Father, we know that. And so I ask you to give them peace and love Give a sense of hope, even in the midst of tears. Give them, remind them that death is not the final answer. Death doesn't get the final answer, the final word, but you, you and life do. And Father, thank you so much for all the things that you have given to us. Thank you for Jody's new Bible study. Just excited for that. I hope everything goes well with that. We're thankful for this, this reopening process that we're starting to engage and that a lot of churches are engaging and that just give wisdom and guidance to that process as well because it's going to be a tough one. It's going to not be an easy one. So Father, just give patience and wisdom and guidance for that as well. Father, we thank you so much for Heidi's friend who got engaged as well. Just prayers for those that couple and for their families as they plan all of the things that need to be planned around that um, and get ready for that even in the midst of all the craziness that's happening. Father, we are so thankful for the churches and for the pastors that you have given us, the communities of faith that we can walk into. We ask you to continue to uplift them, continue to remind them that they are the church. The building is the building. It's a good tool, but it's just a tool that the church is alive and well and the people that walk around proclaiming the life and living out the life in the love of Jesus. So thank you so much for churches. Thank you for your community and for the pastors and leaders that guide them. Father, we also pray for an upcoming wedding um, upcoming wedding for Robin as well. It's so cool that there's a wedding being planned. And it just reminds me that life goes on in so many ways. There's still beauty and there's still good that's happening. So thank you for that wedding. Father, we also thank you for Susan's daughter who's getting the help she needs. It's so good. So many, so many of us need that, that help, whether it's, you know, no matter where it comes from. But we just need it. And so thank you that Susan's daughter is getting it. And thanks for friends and neighbors who check in on each other, especially for Connie's friends and neighbors who, who check in on her. That's just such a wonderful blessing this time of, of more isolation and more loneliness um, than, than normal. And so thank you so much for that, Father. And everything, absolutely everything that weighs on our hearts and our minds, we now lift up to you. 
and the prayer that your son taught us how to pray together as family. And so now we pray in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. And so what's going to happen now is we are going to kind of close this out with a benediction. But then um, if you'd like to stay around, we're going to have a time of communion. I'm just going to shift over here to the other camera. Uh, I can't see myself very well. So hopefully it will be good and it will be fine. Um, but uh, I'm going to shift myself over to the other camera. We'll have an optional virtual communion time. So um, stay tuned for that if you'd want to. And if not, blessings to your day. I hope it's beautiful. I cannot wait to see you guys in person, even though it will be in smaller huddles and all that kind of stuff. Again, all that reopening plan should be released uh, this week, or at least a sketch of it. I need to present it to the board this week and get it going. Um, it's a lot more uh, layered than I thought originally, so it's good. Um, but thank you uh, just for being here, guys. Thank you for praying with me and dialoguing with me and your wonderful encouragement comments. I so appreciate that. So uh, if you're going to say, if you're going to want to participate in virtual cleaning, just stay around here in a minute or two. If not, go with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord, may, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you, his countenance upon you, and give you his peace always. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you in just a second. I'm just going to play a song. Actually, I forgot. I'm going to play a song, and then I'm going to get back around over there. So here is uh, Nathaniel's uh, song. It is a beautiful, uh, actually Pentecost-driven song, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. So here you go. Spirit ever dwelling in the holiest realms of light, Holy Spirit ever brooding o'er a world of gloom and night, Holy Spirit ever raising those of earth to thrones on high. Living life, imparting spirit, you we praise and magnify. Holy Spirit, ever living as the church's very life. Holy Spirit, ever striving in a ceaseless strife, Holy Spirit ever forming in the church the mind of Christ. You we praise with endless worship for your gifts and fruits unprized. Church's ministry, quickening, strengthening, and absolving, setting captive sinners free. Holy Spirit, ever binding age to age and soul to soul, in communion never.
All right, all right. Hope you guys can hear me. I'm gonna check one thing real quick. Whoop. I got 